She's she's nothing. nothing. She's nothing now. Who make her nothing? Me. Who are you? Who are you? And how long have you been living in her? Find the name of Jesus Christ. I'm never going to leave her. You say what? I'm never going to leave her. You say what? How long have you been living in her? Forever. What have you done to her? Everything. I made her hate herself. You make her hate herself? Mm-hmm. What else? Everything's what are the evil failing. you've done to her? Everything's failing her. Really. What have you done to her career? She wanted it. She wanted it. She got it. Wanted what? Everything that she wanted. She wanted it all. She invited it in and now we're here. She wanted what? She wanted to do drugs. Now she's stuck. So who make her took it? She took him on her own. Oh, she came for it. Huh? She took him. So what have you done to her? Huh? She's nothing. Who make her nothing? Me. You. Who are you? She's so bright. She's a bright light. She wants to help all these kids. She wants to help all these people. I'm going to stop her. Okay, you want to stop her? How long have you been living in her? Forever. Huh? All her life. For a long time? Mm-hmm. Okay. What have you done to marriage? It's done. How did you enter her? How did you enter her? Her mother's lifestyle. So what are the evil you've done to her? Ruin everything. Speak louder. I ruin everything. You ruin everything. Everything like what? I suppress her. I keep her held down with drugs. She gets on the drugs. I get her hooked on it. She's beaten heroin before. She was on heroin. She got clean from that. Then I got her on meth. Now she's got clean from that. And... I'll Where's the her. cause? I'll get her. So you're the cause? Mm-hmm. What have you done to your family? They all hate her. They think she's crazy. The whole town, they think she's crazy. Now get out of her. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be cast out of this body. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. Out! Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, she's free. Miss Kayla, um, I came to Hunger Generation. Miss Kelly invited me to Shepherd. I don't know how to, was his name? yes his conference and kind of been like touch and go since then. Okay, so we understand that you have a testimony to share with us about what God Almighty has done in your life. So if you could just start from the beginning on uh, how you first came to uh, Hungry Generation or when God Almighty began to touch your life and uh, share with us what God has done in your life ever since. Ever well, ever since the conference, it's been like just work 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 you know like trying to get things off of me but the weekend before the conference on Friday I was like I kept trying to get here and I couldn't like everything was like preventing me from getting here and so I was like I don't even care if I have to walk from work I'm gonna walk from work to get to this place like I have to get there and I did like it, I came I was like laid out in front and like I was really kind of incoherent I didn't really know what was going on but I knew that I felt like I wasn't breathing anymore I feel like I died and like 
my eyes were sealing. I could hear these demons talking to me and telling me, like, I'm going to kill you right now in front of all these little Christian people. And what are you going to do? No one's going to help you. Um, it was just so happened that I could hear everybody talking and saying, oh, no, this person's not coming. This person's not coming. This person, you know, like, we're just going to go home, you know. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm thinking in my head, they're going to go home. They're, I'm going to die right here. They're not going to know. They're going to come back. I'm going to be a dead lady in their church, you know. I'm, like, thinking all these things, but I couldn't say anything. And it was just like, they're like, okay, we're just going to have service. We're just going to start praying anyway. So quickly, just to clarify, you mean to say that the week before the conference, you actually came here on a Friday night prayer before anybody got here. So this is what she's talking about. Yeah, so yeah, like nobody even knew I was here. I was like, because everybody's like up there, I'm way down here. And I could hear people saying like, whose bag is this? Whose coat is this? And I want to be like, me over here. And I couldn't, like I, I couldn't say anything. So I mean, during this time, it was just like really scary. I could feel my pulse. Like I felt like my breathing was stopping. It was shallowing. Like I was getting really cold. I could actually feel cold to my, like my skin was getting cold. And it was just like... I really felt like I was dying. Uh, in the mix of it, like, they started service, and I can hear them praying, and I could feel kind of like, I actually thought, like, it w I thought it was Lana. I don't know. It wasn't. She told me, no, that wasn't me, but it was, like, covering. Like, when somebody's getting prayed on, they fall down, they cover them. It was like I could feel these coverings over me, like, over and over and over again, and I could, like, vaguely see, like, just people, not people, but just, like, things putting it over me, and then, like, it just went dark. It was, like, completely, like, so black, you know, and just cold. And then, like, it was just, like, really, really bright again. As they're praying, as, you, as, as they start praying up here and stuff and the music's going, the bass of the music's, like, pumping me, like, pumping me back to life. And it was crazy because it was, like, the week before, like, it just... Let's put our hands together for Jesus. So, Kayla, as you mentioned, that you were having this supernatural experience just right here in the front of the altar um, as prayer was getting started. I just want to know really quickly, what were the struggles that you were having in your life before that actually prompted you to come here and receive prayer? What, can you just explain for us a little bit about what was going on and why you found it necess necessary to seek an answer from God? Yes. Um, my whole life, actually, like, from the time I can remember, it's been, like, one tragic event after the next. It's, like, I barely get up, and boom, I get knocked right back down. And, I mean, from everything dark, you know, anything that you could ever think of, abuse, and, you know. And then as I got a little older, I just dove into drugs because that's what was around me and that's what I used as a covering. Probably from about the age of like nine and 10 is when I started to use drugs and I got into a heroin addiction. I moved here from Pennsylvania because of that heroin addiction. Then I got into meth. And then when I started doing meth, the people that I was doing it with was also into witchcraft. So they were putting things on me and I was doing the drug and I was just lost. Like I was completely just lost. I've always known about God. So I knew that I had to get, you know, this church is the only church in this whole place that I've ever found that the Holy Spirit moves in you know I never felt that and it's like so when I felt that the first time that's why I was so drawn to keep coming back here and Friday I was just like I don't care if I have to crawl there I'm gonna crawl there and so it was just like with the music it was so awesome because music's always been really important to me but like in that moment it was a week before I came here I was listening to music at my house and I was like praising God and I'm like man if I can get to this speaker close enough I'm like sitting on the speaker trying to get you know trying to get like the bump of it and so like it was weird it was just really amazing that it was the base of the music here that was like pumping me like I could feel myself like pumping back to life you know back to life or whatever and I like I started to feel more like prayer over me like they were walking like closer it felt like to me like more prayer was covering me and as it was covering me and the bumping of the music it was like Finally, I was just like, <gasps> and like I could breathe again. Like I couldn't even breathe that deep trying to even show you guys how deeply, like it was like God was like breathing into me. But right before that, like it was just all this light. It was so much light after that blackout. It was like a blackout, then so much light. And it was just like calming, peaceful. And it was just like, I could vaguely just like see an image of like Jesus, you know, just like, sh you know, just calm, just calm, just calm. And it's just like, then I like kind of blacked out again, but not in like a dark way. And then that's when that breath came through. And also, uh, Pastor Facili started to pray on me. And I I'd never even spoke to him yet at that point when he was praying on me. And he was, like, putting crosses in my back. Everywhere that he was crossing in my back, I had pain there for years, like, so many years. And I never said it to anybody, you know? And it was, like, instantly I could feel, like, it, it being healed. Wow, let's put our hands together for Jesus. So you mean to say that since that day, since you were receiving that prayer, and even as Pastor Vasily was praying for you, that all of those places that he prophetically put his hand, all of those are healed now in Jesus' name? Yes, but it gets so much better. Like, and so I started manifesting. <laughs> I started manifesting, and it was like, whoa. It was just to watch it over again 
for me. You know, it was just like, it was all these years of all these things that have been on me since I've been born, you know? And it was just like, whoa, you know, it's so freeing, but it was still like, there was just something there, you know? But I was so delivered, I felt so much better. I'm like, oh my goodness, I, you know, I can like start to live again a little bit. And then so through the conference, I had, well, before the conference, I had like lumps in my breast. Breast cancer runs my family so deeply. Like it hasn't skipped generations since my like great grandma. My mom's had it twice, she survived it. Every woman that has died on my mom's side of the family has died of cancer. And so I have the cancer gene. Everything's pointing to the fact that that was cancer, you know? And it was just like, it kind of felt like a factory that was just making lumps and they were just like dropping down. It was really gross, you know, really gross. And so I had those lumps on Friday whenever I came here. I really didn't speak about it. And I always knew God could heal, but I didn't really ask him to heal me. It was, I don't know, weird. After the conference on Sunday, before I left, I realized that those lumps, like, all of them are gone except for one, but even that one was way small. And I was, like, shocked. I'm like, oh, so you, you healed me too? And it's like, whoa, that was cool, you know? So <laughs> wow. Amen. So you mentioned that you also were receiving healing from the breast lumps. But can you just explain for us about what happened as you received prayer at the conference? What happened to you? What can you say about everything that took place that day? Um, I went through the prayer line all, at the conference all three times, and it was just like, I would feel lighter and lighter. Um, the second day, I stayed with uh, Victoria for the whole weekend because I'm like, okay, there's a prevention. I'm not, you know, I'm going to stay with Victoria. So uh, this, on Saturday, I was talking to Miss Kelly, you know, texting back and forth, and it was like, I felt so much freer and better and lighter, but I still felt like there was something there, but I could never get it out. I couldn't talk about it, and, and Miss Kelly was like, you know what? I, I think like dumb, deaf spirit kind of I'm feeling, you know, and it was it was crazy because my whole life, since I've been a kid, I can see an image of myself as an old lady in a rocking chair. There's nothing around me. It's just blankness. And I'm just refused to talk. And I've seen that image ever since I was a kid, you know? And it was like, as soon as Miss Kelly said, dumb, deaf spirit, I'm like, oh, you know? It was just like amazing. It was, I can't really put it into words. The whole weekend was just like, whoa, like my, it was blown, blown me away. And then on Sunday when I went home, um, I'm like, oh, okay, I realized that, like, oh, okay, you really did heal my lungs, so, okay. You know, I have scoliosis really bad. And to the point where, like, when you put your finger down my spine, there was a point where, like, there was no bone. You could just feel an empty, like, dip, you know? And so I'm like, all right, God, well, you healed my <laughs> everything else. You just fixed my whole life up in this weekend. So it's like, one more, you know, <laughs> one more. So I, I was just have praise music on. I laid on the ground, and I could, I could feel it. My son comes busting in. He's like, trying, he just got out of the shower. And I'm like, shh. He's like, what? I'm like, God's healing my back right now. And he's like, I just, I just need some underwear. I'm like, okay, hurry up, you know. But it was like I could feel the push down. It was like pressure and heat, and it was like, it didn't hurt at all, but I could feel like a push of my, you know, spine. And it's like, it's still a little lump right there, but there's actual bone where I did, couldn't feel bone before. There's, I could feel the hardness of bone in those spots. Wow. So you, amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. So you mean to say that the scoliosis where your back had dipped, your bone, your, your spine has actually straightened out since then? <laughs> yeah. Amen, amen. We serve a miracle-working God. Hallelujah. I don't hear you loud enough. I need to hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. So, Kayla, you mentioned that before you uh, came to the conference, before you came to that prayer, uh, Friday night prayer, that you had been struggling with uh, methamphetamine and um, being addicted to drugs. So what has happened to you since you've had this wonderful encounter with Jesus Christ as he's healed your body of different kinds of sicknesses and diseases and he has set your heart free? But what has happened in that regard to the addiction that you had to drugs? The addiction that I had to drugs, I'm so hard-headed that, you know, of course, I'm like, oh, well, maybe I could, you know, and then it was like, no, nope, stop right away, because if you do, you're just going to erase everything that just happened. I'm just trying to say, I set you free, and I set you apart over here, you know, it's like, you can't do these things, but what really got to me is that my mom was watching from the Friday service, my mom was watching it obsessively, I don't know why, like over and over and over again, and she told me one of the days, she said, you know, I actually, when they were telling you to blow out, I could see vapors coming out of your mouth and when I'm watching this video, like watch this again. And I'm like, uh, you know, but as soon as I thought to smoke, I thought those vapors, you know, and I even did try to smoke marijuana and it was like nothing, no 
effect, no, no effect on me whatsoever that I instantly thought of those vapors and was like, oh, absolutely not, I cannot do this. I, I realized what I was doing for the first time, stopped and thought about it and the repercussions of it and actually had like a conscience for the first time in my, my whole life. I never thought about if I was offending God or nothing. I just did what I wanted to do impulsively and I have never thought about consequences or anything, how I was hurting anybody. But this time I did, and that's it's awesome. It may seem like a small thing because normally people have that, you know, but it's like it's so awesome to care. And I'm excited about life. Like I'd never been excited about life, my life. Amen. So since that day, have you picked up any drugs, any methamphetamines, any marijuana since that day? No, no. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the miracle working Jesus Christ. Amen. And lastly, Kayla, we just want to ask you, we know that you have gone through a lot in the last couple of weeks and God Almighty has done a complete overhaul on your life. And we just want to know um, how you're doing now, your excitement about life, and what is your advice to people who may have been struggling with the same things that you have with drugs or with any kind of sicknesses? What can you tell them to encourage their faith? Um, well, one is that, like, we have to, I have to start looking at God as he is my father. So just like, if my child, she can't reach something and she needs a cup, she's thirsty. If she doesn't ask me, I don't know that she needs it. And I mean, God's not human, so he knows what we need, but he's just waiting for us to say it because he respects us. He, he cares about what we want and he wants us to communicate it with him. So even though he knows and he can fix it in a second, just ask him. And if you feel like you keep falling and you feel like all negative, just keep asking for forgiveness as soon as you mess up. Like, don't let time wait. Don't let a second get in between your sin and God without asking for forgiveness because it separates so much and it, can, it will control your mind. It will just keep trying no matter how much you fall. Just keep trying. Amen. Let's put our hands together one more time for Jesus.